In today's module, we're going to be talking about Workload Identity Federation. And in the previous video, we actually talked about Workforce Identity Federation, and there is a big difference. Now, with Workforce Identity Federation in the previous video, we talked about how applications using an access token uh, could access applications within Google Cloud, right? And instead of actually syncing the identities from on-prem to the Google Cloud, right? Now, in this specific module where Workload Identity Federation comes into play, is it's all about keyless authentication for service accounts. So just like Workforce when we were talking about authentication, we're also talking about authentication here, but in a different mechanism. And again, it's for apps outside of Google Cloud, and hence the word federation comes into play. Now, let's look at, first of all, what is the current state, right? What is the current problem, right? So the kind of, it kind of evolves around the fact that applications are holding the keys, right? So whenever an application wants to use another application, it has these keys, right? These, these, uh, these keys, these mechanisms that are used to authenticate and authorize the actual usage here, right? Now, the problem with these keys is that it doesn't actually guarantee the app actually has permissions to use the key, right? The fact that the app has the key doesn't necessarily make it that it actually had the permissions, right? And also, these keys are held without an expiration date. So they're basically long-lived keys, right? And there's no guarantee where it's stored. Is it stored securely? And there's no guarantee on who actually has access to these keys, right? Anybody could have access there. And really, the problem here is it's all about key lifecycle management, right? That's one of the key problems here, right? And really, when you look at the managing, the storing, the distribution of the service account keys, there it is a fundamental problem. And this, in turn, turns a key problem into an identity problem, right? And really, that key problem and identity problem in itself turns into a secret management problem, okay? So we went from an identity to a secret because essentially the key is fundamentally a secret and we have to securely process that, right? So the solution is obviously not to use the keys, right? So that actually really erodes the actual whole issues that we're having with the key, the key management and the life cycle of that key. Now, so where does Workload Identity Federation come into play, right? So given now that we understand what the problem here is, let's kind of like look towards the how Workload Identity Federation actually adds value, right? So first of all, it enables applications outside of Google. So remember that word federation, federated, right? That means we're talking about two distinct environments here, Google Cloud and either on-prem or a different cloud provider like Azure, AWS, etc., right? And what we're doing is we're replacing those long-lived, non-expiration date account keys, okay, with a short-lived, that has an expiration date, access tokens, right? And these are basically credentials, right? So, so basically what we're gonna be doing is instead of the keys, we're gonna be using access tokens, right? And there's a lot of advantages to those access tokens, right? Now, keyless application authentication mechanism for using uh, when connecting to Google APIs is really kind of like taking that whole authentication to the next level, right? We're, we're shifting from something that's long-lived to short-lived, right? So let's look at a scenario here, right? So we have our application and that application belongs to a company and it's basically using some kind of company credentials, right? And what it does, it actually accesses a service account and inside part of that service account, we have an identity to the application. So that's what that service account does. And we're giving those permissions to the app, right? And it actually uses service keys. And what we're doing here is those applications are using some Google Cloud resources, right? So that kind of model works perfectly fine because the applications are in Google Cloud, the service accounts are in Google Cloud, and the Google services that we're accessing is also in Google, right? So very simple, very simple solution there. However, when things get tricky, is now when we split that, right? So when we have a federated environment where we have a Google Cloud environment and we have an on-prem environment, right? So let's walk through this kind of scenario, right? So we have our applications and what it basically does is, first of all, it authenticates to the external identity provider, right? And the external identity provider provides the application some credentials. 
Okay. Now, what the, what the application then does, it takes those credentials and gives it to the security token services within Google Cloud, right? And the reason why it does that is because those long-lived credentials, okay, that the external identity provider provided is replaced now with a Google Cloud access token. Okay, now these are short lived as we explained on the previous slide. And then what the application does, it actually uses that access token that it obtained from the security token services to impersonate a service account within Google Cloud, which in turn allows access to the Google Cloud resources, right? So in that whole mechanism, we went from, you know, we provided a much more secure way of having applications connecting to Google Cloud services, okay, using an external identity provider through the mechanisms of service account, service token, serv security token ser services, access token, and a service account. Okay, now let's dive a little bit more deeper into the Workload Identity Federation, right? So first of all, we know it's Identity Federation. It's identities that are traversing different environments, hence the reason where federation comes into play, right? And for example, it could be AWS, it could be across uh, different environments, but typically it's used with uh, across identity providers and it supports multiple identity providers, right? So wh what kind of identity providers does it support? OIDC, Open Inter Interconnect, um, uh, available from Microsoft, uh, is an example of an OIDC platform, SAML 2.0. Um, so really what we're doing with the Workload Identity Federation is we're granting permissions, right, to access those applications accessing across different environments, whether that be on-prem, cloud, etc. cetera, um, can be multi-cloud, data centers, and it's basically external workloads, right? So when we talk about applications, applications is perhaps a different loosely associated word is workloads, right? So those workloads are external to Google Cloud and they're accessing the Google Cloud resources and the applications external to Google Cloud needed to access Google Cloud resources is what's leveraging the Workload Identity Federation, okay? And, w well, we do this already to some extent, right? We, you know, this mechanism is provided by accessing, right? But the big difference is we want to do it without service account keys. Now, why do we need Workload Identity Federation, right? So we know what it is now, right? But we see the advantages, but why would we want it, right? So apps wanting access to GCP resources, these apps typically use service account keys. We want to move away from service account keys and create short-lived short access tokens, right? Now, service keys are powerful credentials, if you think about it. These keys give access to a lot of things, right? So the problem directly with these service keys is how are the service keys managed? Who manages the service keys? How are the service keys downloaded and stored? how, when, who rotates these service keys. And these are obviously big security risks. So simply what we do is replace the service account keys with access tokens, right? Now, why do we need Workload Identity Federation in terms of the solution aspects of it, right? So now what it does is with Workload Identity Federation, we can leverage identity access management, right? So Google Cloud native security service that's built into Google Cloud, and we can use that to help us give us identities to external components and basically associate them to IAM roles, right? So you can also, as part of this mechanism, impersonate service accounts, right? So basically apps gets a federated access token as we saw before. The tokens are used to impersonate the service account, obtains a short-lived OAuth 2.0 access token. Using these short-lived tokens, it, the application of the workload accesses the Google Cloud API and that's the original service account has access to. So same like, same kind of access mechanisms that we're putting in place, but we're substituting the account keys with the, the service account keys with the access token, right? So ultimately, why does this help? Because there's no maintenance around the service account keys no longer needed, and there's no security with security account keys, right? So both of those were a problem. We basically eliminated both those issues by not using the service account keys. Okay, now some of the components that make up Workload Identity Federation, you know, what is the, the key components? What are the, the elements here, right? So first of all, we need a Workload Identity Pools, right? So these are used to manage identities that are external to Google Cloud. And we create one for each of the different Google, the non-Google Cloud environments. So we could create one for AWS, Amazon, 
services or Microsoft's AWS or data center on-prem, okay? Or we can create identity pools, for example, for environments such as for development, staging, production, production, etc. Right. Now, in addition to creating the workload identity pools that represent the identities, right, we also need to create a workload identity pool providers, right. So this, think of this as the glue between Google Cloud and our other environment, right, for, such as the IDP, right, and AWS. Um, uh, AAD, uh, On-Prem Active Directory Federation, Services, Okta, and Kubernetes clusters, right? So that's the, uh, that can be examples of identity pool providers, right? Now, Workload Identity Federation in terms of the standards and protocols, the standard and protocols, it follows the OAuth 2.0 token exchange specification, right? So the flow is, and as we saw in an earlier diagram, and this is just a recap here, is you provide the credentials to the IDP, uh, from the IDP, you get back a um, uh, you get you, you get the information back, and then you actually send the actual information to security token services, to which you actually which the actual security token services verifies the identity on the credential. Right now, the security token services provides a federated token back to the app. And then the app essentially uses this credential for that token, exchanges the credentials for that token in order to be able to use the actual Google Cloud services. Now, going a little bit more deeper into the identity provider, some of the uh, attributes and mappings, it does use, and sometimes they call claims, right? So, so what are attributes and mappings, right? So basically, the tokens that are generated by the IDP contains attributes and it can contain one attribute or it can create more than one attributes. And basically these attributes, right, um, and some IDP calls them claims, right? So these attributes, right, actually provide additional information, right? They provide additional information about the user um, and, that's, and, and that's what's being communicated. But there needs to be some kind of agreement between the IDP and Google Cloud, right? So the mechanism in the middle is obviously Google Security Token Services, and it contains attributes which is equal to one or greater to one. And some of these attributes can include, for example, Google.subject, Google.groups, attribute.name, etc. Right. And then something else we call it is uh, attribute conditions, right? Now Attribute conditions is basically creating for additional constraints on the attributes. So if you wanted a large group of users that wanted to access it, you can actually create attribute um, conditions to say only a subset of those users or applications could be relevant. Okay. So how do we implement workload identity federation? Very simple. We're going to set up workload pools. And as I mentioned before, we can have many of these workload identity pools and we create these within Google Cloud, right? Now, the second step is we establish a one-way trust between the identity provider, which is external to Google Cloud, to Google Cloud, right? To the, to the actual workload identity pools. And then finally, step number three is we are focused on the identity access management roles and permissions, and we create an IAM policy for the identities in the pool to impersonate the service account. So a simple one, two, three steps to implementing workload identity federation. Okay, and thank you, and that concludes today's module.